Being an island nation, Britain has a long tradition of protecting more than 500 miles of coastline and its maritime community. Today's Police Search and Marine Unit is a valuable front line in detecting acts of terrorism as well as search and rescue. Here's more now on the specialist officers and the vessels that protect our shores. An example of the searches that we get involved with, there was a high profile one with Ben Savage who uh, went missing after a night out. It was 58 days uh, later that we eventually discovered uh, Ben and returned him to his family. But obviously imagine getting in the water and recovering Ben from 58 days of being deceased in the, in the water. Um, it, it's not pleasant. We all liken it to if it was a member of our family. We do the utmost that we can possibly do to support the family, but also support our staff. But it's part of being a police officer. We go to places and deal with things that the general public don't. Officers in the Kent Police Search and Marine Unit risk their lives in dangerous waters along the Kent coastline. The Kent Search and Marine Unit are out patrolling on this rib every day. Right now, we're on the estuary of the Medway where it meets the Thames, but their patch is huge. It covers 500 miles of coastal waters, all the way from the Dartford Crossing to Rye on the south coast. We're only a small unit, we pack a big punch. The important task of protecting this huge swathe of coast falls on the shoulders of just eight officers and a small boat called a rib, offering little protection against harsh conditions. They were forced to sell their bigger launch due to budget cuts. These highly skilled officers respond to daily intelligence reports in their fight against organised crime. We're in the Coimbra Harbour, which, uh, as you can see, has got quite a few yacht moorings. Coming along here to see what boats are in, particularly visiting boats, this is a really good spot for uh, foreign yachts to come across uh, the channel. We'll be looking at documents, looking at passports or travel documents, ID cards. Uh, we would then ask where they come from, what ports they've been to, and we try and ask if they've been approached by anybody uh, or they've seen anything suspicious. We are the gateway to Europe and we're also the gateway to London through the Thames. So we work closely with the Met and with Essex and together the three of us collaborate and, and exercise operations exactly to counter the terrorism threat. There's a lot of onus on criminality and organised criminal gangs coming through maritime policing issues. So uh, a lot of the crimes like uh, importation of drugs, firearms, human trafficking, as well as counter-terrorism is what we deal with. You know, we'll come alongside a yacht and we'll just have a chat to them. And even that can be counter-terrorism work. There can be people trafficking because you just do not know what's on board these boats. If someone doesn't look like they, they should be on that boat, it arouses our suspicions, really. And normally, nine times out of 10 or 10 times out of 10, even when we think something's not quite right, it generally isn't. But the teams don't just work on the water. Their extreme training means that they are highly skilled on land as well in diverse areas such as chemical or biological contamination and searching for bodies or vulnerable people in all terrains, including hazardous conditions. Mud rescue, working at heights, swift water rescue. You know, we don't think about having to rescue the people in swift currents of rivers and torrents, but we get trained especially for that. The challenge for me and the team is to uh, deliver uh, that effective policing um, with the staffing levels at such. I'm looking to increase the actual marine unit by two officers and increase their capability via the use of drones, etc. Working at sea in a small boat with little protection is inherently dangerous, and that's without the challenge of fighting crime. If it's rough conditions, you've got to get this rib alongside the boat steady enough when you're going up and down with, with, with the waves to be able to get our crew on board that ship and you have to get across. Now that's dangerous in itself. You don't know who these people are. You, they could have weapons, they could have guns, could have knives. You know, they, they could be very bad people that are all happy for us to get on board. And then once we're on board, who knows what they might want to do to us when we're there. Dedicated and skilled, these officers thrive on challenge. It is through the dedication of the officers involved. They realise it is such a unique opportunity for them. They all enjoy coming to work because they don't know what they're going to be facing every day. They're highly trained in so many different areas that we just uh, love the challenge and uh, they rise to it and they, and they do achieve that.